advised that this recorded webinar has been edited from its original format, which may have included a product demo. To set up a live demo or to request more information, please complete the form to the right. Or if you are currently not on CSC Global, there is a link to the website in the description of this video. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Briefly Speaking, Digital Brand Considerations in Mergers and Acquisitions. My name is Caitlin Alberta, and I will be your moderator. Joining us today are David Franklin and Helena Ledick. David is the Global Director of Brand Protection at CSC. He is responsible for the global direction and leadership of CSC's brand protection services, which help clients detect and remove online threats. Helena is an Associate General Counsel for CSC in the Chicago office. She is a business attorney with experience in negotiating commercial contracts, corporate governance, compliance, security, and privacy. And with that, let's welcome David and Helena. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, today's agenda for our Briefly Speaking presentation on digital brand considerations for M&A, what we're going to cover is we'll talk a little bit about CSD, then we're going to go into those brand considerations with M&A, and then what we'll do is we'll finish up with a question and answer session. But first, a little bit about CSC. CSC offers solutions for every phase of business life cycles. We help form entities, we help maintain compliance and execute secure transaction work. We offer a single tax and risk management platform for our customers. And most importantly for today, we support mergers and acquisitions. We help effectively manage, promote, and secure our clients' valuable brand assets against online threats. We work with more than 10,000 law firms, 180,000 corporate customers, and 3,000 financial and market customers. We um, protect more than 65% of the 100 best global brands, including seven of the top 10, and we work with more than 90% of the Fortune 500. To get us started off, David is going to talk to us about CSC's digital brand services. David, take it away. Thank you very much, Helena. So, um, yeah, CSC's digital brand services division is unique in the industry in providing sort of three pillars of services which all complement each other um, and have been, been able to help thousands of brands um, over the last uh, 20 or 30 years that uh, CSE uh, Digital Brand Services Division has been providing services. So domain management and security services um, are from fundamental to helping enable a business online, so domain management services, uh, DNS services. We'll come to DNS in a minute. Um, uh, digital certificate management. Um, launching, launching brands, brand advisory, as well as brand protection services and so monitoring for any kind of brand infringements, whether that's in domain names, social media, or fake goods being sold online, as well as on the right-hand side, our fraud protection services, so protecting companies against phishing attacks, um, any kind of security uh, uh, attempts or impersonation attempts. So David's going to take us into uh, the current M&A landscape, the best practices for digital considerations pre-acquisition, and then also post-acquisition, and then how online audits and ongoing monitoring can help. And now we'll get started with merger and acquisition landscape. So David. 2021 was a, uh, a, what we call a blowout year for M&A. Can you reflect a little bit on that and then what's happening with 2022? Sure, Helena, um, with pleasure. So yeah, 2021 easily beat the pre-pandemic level of M&A activity uh, that we've seen. It nearly matched the peaks, uh, you can see on this graph, in 2015 in 2007, and in fact, in 2021, $5.1 trillion worth of M&A activity was recorded. And um, 
some of you on this uh, call might wonder why that was the case. Well, there were three main things driving um, the activity for M&A in 2021. One was uh, very easy access to capital. Um, a second was uh, low interest rates. Um, and the third was a recovering global economy after the pandemic. So that's the reason why it was such a blowout year. Now, 2022 um, could also be as big, if not bigger. At the end of 2021, there was a survey um, of 350 US business leaders that predicted um, that 2022 could be even bigger because of a number of things. One is um, continued access to record amounts of cash. A second factor is the acute labor shortage that I'm sure many of you are experiencing on this call. Uh, companies are using M&A activity or mergers and acquisitions to, uh, as a way to acquire more talented staff um, as, as a sort of a shortcut. And we're also seeing um, a continued trend of traditional companies buying technical companies or tech companies to digitize their business. Um, as we saw in the pandemic, um, there was a massive move uh, for business to move online, and we're seeing traditional companies wanting to make sure that they are doing as much as they can to digitize their business. So that's driving the M&A activity, and I think that's going to continue through 2022. However, that prediction at the end of 2021 was before the war in Ukraine broke out um, and before interest rates started to creep up and a certain amount of sort of uncertainty sort of crept into the global uh, business outlook. So that might affect the prediction a little bit. So it's not quite so clear cut, but I still think 2022 will be a very strong year for M&A activity. So now what we're going to do is David's going to walk us into the best practices for digital considerations pre-acquisition. So David, why don't you tell us about the digital assets that we need to consider as part of the M&A process? Well, Helena, it's not just about the company's website or their domain names, but there's a number of other things to consider. It's your whole business infrastructure, your email, um, your uh, DNS infrastructure that might underpin your uh, VPN or vi virtual private network um, that you might use for collaborative file access amongst your employees, especially now that many people work from home and have uh, uh, more of a, a, a sort of a distributed IT, IT architecture, social media, mobile apps. So all of these need to be considered as part of the M&A process. So the first step um, with any M&A activity is really to establish who has access to the digital assets we just saw a moment ago. Um, and it's really important to understand who has access to what. So who's got access to domain names, DNS, SSL, web hosting, etc. And what we find is that M&A um, activity often involves uh, staff churn and uh, a lot of the time, some of these digital assets will be owned by individuals who have purchased maybe um, an SSL certificate using a credit card, um, and they have a username and password, which they know, and if, they've, um, uh, if, if they're not part of the M&A process um, and they leave, then um, that could cause all sorts of issues. And often we find that the due diligence that uh, we're talking about here only happens once the ink has dried and the acquisition is public, which might often be too late. So this webinar will hopefully help you to understand what needs to be considered in advance of any M&A activity um, and avoid the pitfalls that you might otherwise fall into. So one of the key considerations as part of any M&A activity is to make sure your domain assets are in good order. Yeah, you may not know that uh, M&A activity is coming. Uh, that's quite often the case. So it's good practice to make sure that the legal owner for any of your websites or any of your domain names is correct and up to date, just as it would be for trademark certificates. Now, David, let me stop you right here. You talk about that it needs to be in good order, but we so often know that things are not in good order 
What happens when they're not in good order? Well, if the domain ownership or the who is record for a um, website is incorrect um, and it's part of m and activity, it can be an admin nightmare uh, to get it corrected. Um, it's deemed out as compliance. Um, worst case, um, a domain registrar could take down a website. That's unlikely in most cases. Um, in most cases, we'll just need to supply lots of supporting legal documentation. So it, it just makes the whole process a lot more cumbersome and um, long-winded. So make sure you don't leave any domain assets out of the list that you're, um, you're working on transferring as part of the m and activity. And make sure that the companies referenced in those domains are all correct and up to date as the, the company um, that you're referencing as part of the, the merger and acquisitions and not another company. Because if it's, a, if it's another company and they're not part of the M&A process, um, you're going to need to rely on goodwill to resolve that with that uh, other company. And sometimes the goodwill might not be there. Um, and you might get into a battle as to who owns the domain. So make sure everything's up to date in terms of um, legal owner. It just makes it more as efficient as possible. Um, the second point here is, um, are all of your domain assets consolidated with one registrar? Um, so it probably is, is uh, fa fairly obvious, but if you've got all of your domains with one registrar, it makes it incredibly easy to move them over as part of an M&A process. Um, so websites, the email, everything under those websites. Um, and it makes the, uh, the risk of downtime so much less. So just re remember that one hour of website downtime cost on average businesses 120,000 US dollars per hour. If you've got them all with one uh, registrar, then it's very unlikely you'll have any downtime. If you've got 10, 20, sometimes we see companies with, with tens of different um, uh, third parties who might be registering and administering their domain names, and there's a very much higher risk that it'll be, uh, one of those websites will go down as part of the transfer process. And then lastly, um, when you're selling an organization, Define the list of domains to be transferred, especially if you have names uh, across multiple organizations. If you accidentally forget, it can cause issues and end up in a, a situation where you're in a battle with a, a third party. Um, make sure it, you're super clear so you don't give away more than you intended. And if you have any licensing arrangements, which is quite common with certain types of industries, like, for instance, um, automotive industries where car dealers might be licensed to have domains with certain IP, make sure they're also included as well. So don't forget about your, um, your SSL certificates, your DNS infrastructure, and also your social media. Some of you might not have forgotten about that, and you, you may well have clicked the button earlier when we did the poll. Um, and for those of you uh, that are not familiar with these terms, um, uh, DNS is essentially the phone book of the website. It's a way of connecting browsers to websites. So it tells a browser how to get to a particular website. SSL is the, um, is the secure um, encryption that makes sure that if you're um, transacting with a website that all of your details are being encrypted um, and they're not visible in, uh, to, to others that might be list, trying to listen into that um, uh, transaction. So SSL certificates, domain name systems, um, it's also good to consider consolidating those with one provider before um, moving them as part of an m activity. If your certificate expires, and as we saw earlier, many of these um, we commonly um, find in companies that they might have been registered by an individual with a credit card, that individual leaves as part of the m and process, and then um, it becomes very difficult then to manage when those SSL certificates are expiring, when they need renewing. And if, if they go down, then customers going to that website will then see a not trusted 
status for the website, which obviously causes issues with, with customer uncertainty, customer uh, trust issues, and can be quite a scramble to fix it. It can take several hours in some cases. Also, make sure um, you've identified um, all of the social media handles. Make sure you know who has access and the, the username and, and passwords for those uh, social media profiles. Um, there was a case recently where after an emergent acquisition where um, a customer came to us and said, oh, do you know who has access to that LinkedIn account? Um, and of course, it was, uh, it was a case where there was somebody who'd left the organization. So make sure that you've got everything in good order before the M&A activity. So David has walked us through the best practices pre-acquisition. Now what he's going to do is he's going to take us through the best practices for digital considerations post-acquisition. So post-acquisition, um, you'll probably need to clean up the ownership details on your domain portfolio with your registrar um, to reflect the, the new entity or, or, or the new status uh, after the acquisition. Um, if you're the acquiring company, you might also want to do an audit of the domain names to make sure you have the complete list um, and that you have complete visibility of all of the ownership uh, details. Um, make sure you budget for that step, um, the, uh, the cleanup, because it, it can be quite significant if there's a lot of ownership changes that need to be made in order to get everything in order. And if there's a merged entity or a new brand to be launched, there's also going to be additional considerations. We'll cover that in the next slide. The other thing to think about is um, identify the consumer review sites where your company appears. Um, some of these will need to have amended contact details with the new uh, merged company identity um, so company name, address, et cetera. It always pays to, to be ahead of the game when it comes to con consumer review sites. So in, in the last slide, we touched on um, brand launch considerations and, and uh, where you might have a new entity um, that is formed as part of an M&A. Um, so we're going to dive into this a little more detail on this slide. Um, so the first thing to think about is, is the brand launch a crown jewel edition, um, or is it um, moderately important or just a campaign related? And that will help you gauge um, how much um, preparation and protection you need, whether it's a sort of a broad um, or the broadest set of, of uh, registrations you need to do. So really, you need to be prepared um, work with a registrar that can do the new domain registration systematically and quickly. Um, and one of the most important things is is organize them to hit at exactly the same time and at the right time. So some registrations may take longer to set up. So it's important to have a registrar that can help you manage all of that. So um, when, when you press the go button for the new brand launch, everything happens at the same time. Other thing to think about is that um, uh, it's really important to think about using a masking service to keep it under wraps because we've seen time and time again that third parties, um, domain squatters um, and, uh, and domain investors will be watching um, and if they see any registrations that might give them a clue that there's an M&A coming down the line, uh, they'll quickly snap up domains um, uh, in advance or as soon as they hit the news, for instance, we've seen many cases where people might register the two different sort of merged entities combined together, so company one, company two dot com, or abbreviations like comp one, comp two dot com, or new brand dot biz, etc. So if you keep it under wraps with a masking service, there's less chance that um, people will get wind of something going on. The other thing is um, it's important to register the new registrations before the launch to see what people might be registering, what might need to be acquired or contested post-launch. So um, 
we often get involved with doing an audit. Um, if somebody's thinking of um, a new WYSI brand and they want to see what, what are all the existing registrations out there, because people might have um, already registered years ago for a completely different sort of business area, and it might be an interesting domain that somebody would want to acquire. So uh, we, we can sort of landscape it and, and see what might be some of the cleanup work that needs to be done afterwards to, to maybe bring some of those registrations into your ownership. And then um, think about um, what kind of registrations you want to make. I mean, this is, this is a good policy anyway, um, not just for brand launch, for general housekeeping. So uh, what, what sort of uh, domain registrations you need to have uh, to, uh, as, as a core portfolio, um, and uh, which ones you should register from a sort of tactical point of view. I mean, in general, some of our guidelines, and, and we, we've got some further reading at the end to point you towards, but um, keep the domain length for your new brand launch um, under 15 to 20 characters. Avoid hyphens. Avoid anything that would be difficult to, to spell. Um, I think it probably goes without saying. Uh, and consider country-level registrations as well. We know that Google and other search engines will um, geo-target search results. So for instance, if you're in the UK um, and you, you type in a brand, then brand.co.uk will get um, a high ranking, a high search ranking. If you're in Germany, you know, the brand.de will get a high search ranking. So um, it's important to consider what country level registrations also make sense. Um, and um, yeah, don't forget social media as well. So you'll need to make sure you've registered um, the, the social media handles so that those aren't snapped up once you've launched your brand. Um, the other thing is think, think about um, security. Um, so things like um, uh, if you've got key domain names you're going to be driving lots of business through, make sure they've got proper security, multi-lock, two-factor authentication, uh, email fraud protection, that sort of thing. So David has walked us through the considerations um, pre-mergers and acquisitions and post-mergers and acquisitions. Now what he's going to do is he's going to walk us through online auditing and ongoing monitoring and how that can help organizations. So there are a range of digital threats that can impact a company's IP value. And why is that important in the um, in the context of mergers and acquisitions. Well, if you are an organization that is purchasing another company um, and that company is facing some of these digital threats, then that can affect their IP value, could drive the, the value of a company's IP down. And it can be a useful negotiating uh, gambit um, to get a better price for your acquisition. Um, conversely, if you are the company being acquired and you can prove that um, you're pretty much clear of these kind of digital threats, then that can uh, ask that, that can give you perhaps a better IP valuation and, and enable you to be more robust in your negotiations as part of an M and A. So um, that's kind of why it makes sense to consider it in the overall context of mergers and acquisitions. Some of these digital threats are things like um, domain infringements, copycat, um, domain names uh, that could confuse customers, lead them to the wrong place, uh, cause them to be uh, scammed out of money. That's quite common. Online counterfeits. We often see in, in, in many different market areas that counterfeits can really erode a brand's value. Um, it can destroy the cachet or exclusiveness of luxury brands, for instance. Um, we find it can undermine the sort of safety aspect of certain things like car parts, for instance. Um, we see impersonation on social media sites. Sometimes you get fake lottery scams, fake donation scams. There's been some high-profile cases in the last few years of that. Phishing. In the last two or three years as part of the pandemic, we've seen phishing increase by 300% over the last two years. So there's a lot of that going on. As more and more people are online, um, we're seeing 
more and more people being targeted by the fishers to trick them out of money. So all of those things can really impact the company's IP value. So you need to be aware of those. So one of the ways to assess um, how much your company or a company that you might be considering as an acquisition is being affected by IP infringements is to do an audit. One of the things that CSC does for many of its clients is an audit report of all of the kind of issues that might be that they might be facing in a kind of a, a snapshot of activity that's going on at the moment, and it covers things like domain name issues, um, logo issues, social media, um, marketplace, online marketplaces, uh, security issues. So this is a, a really good step to to have a sort of a visibility and a picture of what's out there because a, a lot of it might not be known to you and this, this helps make the unknowns known. So the other thing to consider is whether it makes sense to have um, an ongoing brand monitoring activity as well as um, in, as well as the, the snapshot audit that we just saw. Um, especially if you've launched a new brand or you've got a newly merged entity um, and you want to protect the value and especially protect the IP value in that new entity. Because as we've seen, especially over the last few years, the internet is constantly growing, rapidly changing. Um, infringing content can really devalue your brand, um, and it makes sense to have that protection on an ongoing basis, not just as a one-stop uh, one, one uh, snapshot. So this is something that obviously CSC has been able to help many companies with. Um, there is some further information on that link there. Um, we would encourage you to go there because what we have found is that in in this sort of uh, new digital age, um, if some, if a company has been impacted and customers have been defrauded or there's a proliferation of fakes, we find that that news travels very quickly and people post on social media and, and um, you can very quickly get a bad reputation if, it, if, it, if a brand's not seen to be dealing with it um, and, and tackling the problem and taking responsibility. To supplement everything that David has told us about, we have a couple of guides for you from CSC. So a little bit of light bedtime reading about best practices with mergers and acquisitions, and then developing and launching a new brand. So don't be too alarmed with the, um, the reference to light bedtime reading. These are only about four or five pages long in each case. Uh, they're very readable, and in fact, the M&A um, resource has got a really handy checklist which we'll cover very briefly on the next slide. So here's the M&A checklist I referred to earlier. Um, and this is uh, a list of things that really you should make sure you've covered off and considered before entering into any M&A activity. Uh, things like domain audit, um, DNS audits, SSL certificates, um, making sure that you've got a budget for any modification to domain ownership records after post acquisition, um, making sure you know who all the authorized users are and who all the vendors are providing all the different services for the different digital assets. Uh, so it's some of the really key considerations. And, and certainly for um, our audience members, um, this uh, presentation will be available for you to download. Feel free to copy out the M&A Digital Brand Considerations Checklist and put that into your overall checklist, your overall playbook um, is just another thing that you can add in there as part of that entire M&A process. 